Welcome to All Home Care Matters, the show where we discuss all things home care with discussions on important age-related matters and topics. Brought to you by Enriched Life Home Care Services, the number one rated home care provider in Michigan by top rated local. Hello, and welcome back to All Home Care Matters. If this is your first time visiting us here at the show, we want to say thank you for taking time out to be with us today. We appreciate how valuable everyone's time is, and that's why we try and make each episode here at All Home Care Matters something that hopefully matters to you. Today, we have a very special guest, Dr. Jimmy Fang, the founder of Fixable, an online virtual physiotherapy platform that is helping seniors age in place safely. Welcome, Dr. Fang. Thank you for having me this morning. Really excited about this uh, this session. Yeah. So, Dr. Fink, tell us a little bit about yourself and a little bit about your background. Sounds good. Um, so, I've been helping people out of pain for the past, uh, I guess, almost fourteen years. And um, you know, I, I guess at the highlight, I was working with um, you know, pretty high end athletes on the prevention side of things as well as performance side of things. So, worked with the national wrestling team as well as the UFC. Um, and uh, I was building out integrated clinics with medical doctors, physios, chiropractors, and uh, more of a, I guess, from pain to prevention to performance. So, we found a really good formula in regards to, you know, getting people out of pain, but also keeping them out of pain. Um, so that's why I got into this, uh, <laughs> this field of um, prevention and also, you know, Asian at home. Um, yeah, that's my background. Uh, in a nutshell, you know, if, from there, I, I've also built, uh, I got into tech, I guess, back in 2010, we built one of the first um, cloud-based electronic medical records and for specialty in ENT. So was able to exit out of that and uh, did okay. And then from there, I was an angel investing in different uh, technology companies. And I really got really deep into tech, but I just understood at the end of the day that I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an operator at the end of the day. And uh, one of the, my key things, Things, I think um, what we built, what we built, it was, was, was for uh, prevention and prevention is extremely hard. As you know, boy. humans are lazy. And so we need a really good uh, technology platform as well as um, psychology kind of built into the platform to and really engage people to, to, to feel better. So from your passion of helping people deal with pain and to safely age at home, you, you created Fixable. And Fixable is a virtual physiotherapy that helps people with dealing with pain, managing pain, and safely aging at home. For our viewers and listeners that may not be familiar with physiotherapy, virtual physio physiotherapy, why don't you explain what it is and kind of how it works? Sure, sounds good. Um, you know, if you go back to the research in regards to how how people, I guess, get better and how do you progress. Um, in, in a rehab state, it's really about old overloading a system. So physical therapy in general, rehabilitation in general, our job is to, um, number one, reduce the pain. So there's many ways in reducing pain. And then number two, to create better function. So, and with function comes strength, stability, endurance, and all those components that you really need a good formulation of exercises, movements, and all the stuff you can do, totally can do at home to, to kind of progress. And along the way, as a, as a human entity, as a body, we, we work, our body really reacts to stimulus, right, into a system. So really need to kind of push your body incrementally to get better. So, you know, the, the product really, the, the platform really helps you to do that. So how do we do that? So number one, we still need to talk to practitioners. You know, we've done a bunch of research with um, non-specific low back pain patients on our platform. We had 94 patients go through the platform and some of which we've got a guided journey with the practitioner and then exercise prescription on their app. So our app has video-based content and it kind of progresses you uh, along the way, personalizes it. And then the other side is cell help just fully just watching the content, doing the exercise and progressing on the program. And the outcomes were significantly better on the guided pro. So I think that comes with the coaching side of things, like building that relationship with people. And then, you know, um, the practitioner able to kind of push you along the way. Um, you know, along this journey, I've also wanted to reduce the costs associated with it. So we yeah. know that across the nation, people drop off their rehab program. It's not that they don't go to it. They actually drop off the rehab programs uh, before they're, they're discharged. So 70% of the time. So it's either due to 
money or, uh, or or due to access and ability. So imagine the aging population or aging population. How do they, on average, like you need nine sessions per per acute injury. How do you even get access to you know you know proper transportation if you can't you're right. not mobile nine times? Like it's it makes it very difficult. So I think initially you need to get a proper diagnosis. So jumping on a call just like this, right, and get a proper diagnosis. And um, you probably you know many of your viewers have probably seen like just the teledocs of the world who do you know more virtual sessions for primary care. Um, you can do the same. And the majority of the diagnosis is actually done after the consultation, 8% of it. And then we should have a differential diagnosis at that point. Right. At that point, we do orthopedic testing. So that means movement patterns to cause you the pain. So we know if I do this equals this, and if I can take it away, it's more likely to be this, right? And also check ranges of motion. And we created the tools on top, of, on top of our platform to make that process a lot easier as well. Um, and then habituation, that's, that's the most important part. Not only did you, did you get a diagnosis or you assess the, you know, exactly what you have and what is the prognosis and what you need to do next, but to incrementally progress and get better, that is what I'm in the game for. And that is the harder part because that human condition is really lazy. If they don't understand the right. whole bigger picture as to what it is and when to stop and when to progress, right, then they're just going to, you know, start when they start feeling a little bit better, they're going to they're gonna stop. And then your recurrence rate happens again. My job is really to create a platform to empower those individuals to not just get out of pain, but work towards better human performance. And, 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 um, and that means like getting way stronger and more stable than when you need to be. So you can worry about other stuff in your life, right? right. Well, and I know for us on the professional side, we noticed that when a family needs extra care for their loved one for whatever reason maybe they just had a hip replacement or they're in a car accident or maybe they're noticing you know their cognitive abilities declining and they have these prescribed physical therapy exercises by their physical therapist or their physician they might be prescribed to have a home health visit three days a week that's going to last for nine weeks at a time as long as it keeps getting recertified they can continue coming but what happens on the days when the physical therapist doesn't come to the home? That person, unless they have somebody there helping to assist them or motivate them or kind of staying on top of it, they won't do with them. You know, they say, well, my physical therapist comes tomorrow. That's when I'll do them. But every physical therapist always says, do these exercises on the days I'm not here. Because if you only see me three days a week and you're only doing your exercises three days a week, four days you're not improving or trying to make progress on your abilities or your range of motion or your functioning. And, you know, and you touched on another thing that I think is very crucial that we see all the time is the transportation. You know, if they don't have, or if they're not qualified for the home health care and they have to go to physical therapy three days a week, but maybe they broke their hand. Well, now that person can't drive. And if they live alone, you can't drive a car with a broken hand. So, how are they getting to that physical therapy? So, so you're kind of trying to solve that problem with fixable, fixable. And why don't you explain a little bit more in depth what exactly fixable is and what that means uh, for people who are in their home and needing physical therapy or help with range of motion exercises? Yeah, no, that's great. And I think you're touching on a great point and accessibility and also, um, being uh, consistent with what you need to do. Here's the prescribed stuff. We have it, like it's all based on evidence and research, right? This is the formulation you need to do, just need to follow on and you need to actually do it. And that's the harder part because, I mean, if you if you think back to even exercise and losing weight or gaining muscle, right? It's not an easy thing to do. So especially if you're just doing it once a week or twice a week at max, right? You need right. to be consistently doing this until this thing's out of your life. Right. And if we've done our job right, then here, well, here's the next step to do. So for low back pain patients, suppose uh, the next step is really to work on core foundations. Right. We know that getting core foundations and as well as, you know, working your diaphragm properly. So getting that muscle down as well, your pelvic floor creates better intra-abdominal instability. That's going to reduce the average movement in the, in the core area in your back that supports the back. Right. So less future occurrences. Right. Um, so how we do this is really, I think, Going back to, I think, our, uh, the conversation a little bit before was first understand what you have. So from the medical doctor to transfer into the file to the PT or the practitioner who's seeing you to really go through the, the latest 
movement to go through the history and understand this is the thing that we can do and solve. And if you if you fit into that category, the thing they can solve, um, then then we create a programming inside the platform for you. So we have a programming that there's stuff in there that you can do right now. So they're programming specific for low back pain, specific for posture ergonomics and you know fall prevention programming as well. Um, now you follow the program and, we're, and on the other side, we also remotely monitor. So our practitioner don't need to see you all the time, right? We see less. We actually can reduce the cost of typical treatment plans by 52% because we can leverage technology, right? Um, so not only are, are you doing the program, but we're watching on the back end to make sure, to just the moderation, to make sure that you're doing the thing properly, right? And we're continuously engaging you through other, it could be simple as a phone call to the messaging in our platform to make sure that you're doing the thing that you need to do. We also have a gamification uh, thing in there as well. So it kind of pushes you to get points and, you know, your health score increases. So it's really engaging those individuals to, you know, do, do more. We know the Asian population specifically love the games on, the, on their iPads, love the candy crushes. So I think that plays a really good part along with it. And then with some of our newer um, programming pilots, we're actually, actually instilling some incentives, Ex internal incentives we already have. Now we're also in instilling some external incentives to kind of get these people, not just from the pain, but working on the prevention component of it, right? Um, and I think if we do that, I think it's going to really help or this Asian population, we know by you now 2046, it's going to, our Asian populations, our senior population is almost going to double. It's, it's right. really scary, right? And what, and if you look at, and it's all different, you know, throughout the states, and we're, we're in Toronto specifically, and each region have different uh, um, infrastructures for this, right? And we right. know during COVID, it's been a massive problem <laughs> with, you know, the COVID infections within those facilities. So they're you know, battling bigger issues, but, um, and we don't have the infrastructure. So I think the most important part, if you are in that cohort, you know, in their fifties, uh, looking into that next step, I think you want to make sure your health is really at a good, good place, right? So mm -hmm. if I can still, again, go back to prevention, prevention is key, right? And we know that a lot of stuff from an aging standpoint could be preventing age better. So increasing not just your longevity, but increasing your health span as well, right? Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, that, I think that's really important. So our goal is really to do that. And then we use different technology to get there. Um, one of which, you know, we get feedback all the time regards to, am I doing the movements correct, exercises correct? So we can do that doing virtual as well, but we're also using machine vision and they'll be uh, deployed very soon. So when you're doing the exercise and the movements, not only are you watching the video of it and it's gonna count down the sets of repetitions that you need to do and when to do and how to do it, but now you're gonna get, also get real-time feedback just with your iPad or iPhone or just with your camera, basic camera, it's gonna tell you if you're doing these movements correctly. And that's one of the feedbacks. So we're trying to take out all the little, I guess, negative thought processes that makes you not wanna do. Right. And it makes no excuse around it. It makes it so easy that you have to do it and, and uh, you'll feel bad not to do it. <laughs> sure. Well, and so if, if somebody's watching this or listening to this right now, Dr. Fang, and they're thinking, this sounds great for my mom or my dad, or even for myself, do they need a prescription to use fixable or how, what is the process from using it or discovering it to then implementing it? Yeah. So I guess currently we, um, you know, in nationwide in Canada, we're, we're totally available upper States. We are, you know, out of pocket and we're also working with other providers. Um, and, um, and what we do is essentially, you know, we, we work with the other providers to kind of build it all in. So it's even covered by your insurance plans. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and they can uh, directly, but on our site, you can directly download the application. You can work on some of the prevention programs already. So feel free to go to fixable.com. That's a P H Y X A B L E. It's a play on words, physical therapy. <laughs> well, we'll have, we'll have links for it too in the show notes and up on the screen. Um, but so essentially just to clarify, if somebody wanted to work on a certain, you know, core exercise or strengthening or preventative measure, they wouldn't need any sort of prescription from a physician. But if they had a prescription or a diagnosis, then would they give that to a physical therapist that they might be working with and then implement it? Okay. So in, depending on the state that you're in, um, for, for Canada, like uh, physical therapy is primary practitioners, so they don't need it. 
uh, prescription at all. Uh, depending on the state you are in, you might need a, a referral from your GP. Okay. Um, so uh, check your state and see, take a look at what you need. But there's no, like, if you jump on our platform, you can jump on a consult with us and you can just book directly on the website and we'll even guide you, triage you for free. Perfect. Okay. So you, you walk them through that process also. Yeah, we'll walk them through that process as well. So it's fully jump on just to see if this is a fit for you. It's not a fit for everybody, right? But, but it's a fit for most, I would say, especially on the prevention side. So if a, if a senior or really anybody that's right now going to the traditional in-person physical therapy, what would be some of the benefits to implementing fixable rather than an in-person physical therapy or doing kind of a hybrid? Absolutely. A hybrid, I think, is is a, is a great choice because even with um you know what we do virtually there's still some stuff i want my patients to do in-house right mm -hmm. there's some of the soft tissue therapy although we use a, a fix a ball to massage you with your it's a massage ball you can massage yourself and get to the nooks and crannies um and relieve pain right away but i think there are components in the brick and mortar setting that is still uh, worthwhile and that's why we have like 161 uh, network partner um, clinics that we can send to if we need additional support um, so things like laser therapy acupuncture shockwave therapy you know and you know the delays and race on machines right but i would sure. say you know for majority of people for majority of problems those things are good adjuncts to the core rehabilitation process and that's and that just means exerting your body you need to do the thing the active care right um to, to to stimulate body to grow, right? Um, so I think that's the most important part. So if you can get that down, the other stuff will make it that much better, right? So just because you get laser therapy and do nothing at home does not mean it's gonna um, you're gonna be getting that much better. Um, and then I think hybrid care. We do have a lot of hybrid care as well. So we have we work with them, auto insurance companies as well right now, where some of the stuff is done in the clinical setting, and then also now the clinicians and our uh, advanced practitioners that's virtual all virtual now we come together to make a treatment plan okay this is these are a lot more you know difficult cases so people sure. who probably have chronic pain and so there's some lingering here and all sorts of disabilities and stuff like that so we come together as a team now we're putting a plan together and then what we where we centralize is the patient progression and the data so along the program you'll, you'll notice that there's questions based on the best literature on outcome measures, right? So things like just basic pain skills, and then you can also implement patient-specific functional skills in there, so asking me how they're to, to look at their activity of daily living, how they're progressing along the way. And then we have a whole dashboard for adjusters and people who are part of the care plan to actually look at, you're able to see how patients are actually progressing over time and how they're doing over time. So therefore the insurers can also say, okay, looks like you're progressing decently. Okay, let's fund this a little bit more. Let's get this person better. These are larger, more bigger cases uh, where there's multiple people on the team. And, and I think that's really valuable in the, in the progression of patient care. Um, one of the key things I think here is outcome measures. So, you know, there's, these, these are based on research. These are the best outcome measures that are within literature in regards to progression. And I think uh, in many clinical practices, we fail to do a lot of these. And I think, uh, I think more objective measures along the way tells the patient, hey, I'm getting better. They see it on their app that, hey, I'm getting better. And then more importantly, um, that your healthcare staff also knows that you're objectively getting better instead of just subjectively, okay, I'm feeling okay. Right. So I can envision this being a wonderful resource for home care providers. How do you how do you envision fixable working with home care companies? So we're doing that right now. <laughs> um, and um, I think, you know, along with the PSW care and also the nursing care at home, where in many cases uh, you're dealing with, you know, a lot of the care you provide uh, from home care companies are just to make sure that these individuals are not in the worst state, right? Um, but I think, uh, I think uh, when, once you're in there, you're starting to make them feel better and making sure their basic needs are met, you know, um, that the next step, what, are, what is that individual doing to make sure that their quality of life is actually getting better instead of just kind of like waiting for the next step or decline, sure. decline of their life, right? And we know that we can get these people better. And we know that 
you know, there's some good research to show that 10,000, the 10,000 patients study in UK that just from uh, ability to look at the ability from seated position on the ground to getting up and their lack of ability to do that is directly correlated with length of life <laughs> that they have left. So these are things you can implement from basics of, you know, ranges of motion in if they're bed bound, you know, basic ranges of motion in their feet, hips, and base, basic stuff like that to progressively getting better, better over time. There is a solution out there and motion creates better emotion as well. So it fights depression, encephalons, endorphins, all that fights depression. And, you know, especially as you're aging and alone is very sure. difficult. Um, so I think it, it, one part is, is that just proper, you know, team-based approach with um, companies like yours. And then on the other side, also creating a community around that. And using lived experiences by those people who came out of those bad um, situations, post-operative care, didn't get better, what have you. Now they can walk and do their thing and show that example and create a community around that. So you can also uh, get other people, you know, in that situation excited about the next step instead of just, okay, family member, let's get this care because I can't take care of my <laughs> this individual. Right. And we're just, we just want to make sure they're just okay. Right. So, with with seniors using this what would be some of the limitations that they could face while using virtual physiotherapy yeah i think onboarding i think onboarding is the key so for those who are thinking about it or who are those uh maybe you are seniors that uh, you know think about their first experience with zoom <laughs> right. even yeah. right and uh, or you're getting onto youtube for the first time or something like that i think it is a blocker um we faced that very early on in our roadmap and we did the we're, I guess, in virtual therapy uh, prior to COVID. So it, when virtual wasn't cool, <laughs> so I guess right time, right place, but um, having great safety nets around this is really important. So we go as far as to, the, there's different stepwise, you know, to, to get them on. So we have a 1-800 number um, fixed now <laughs> uh, that, that, that make sure they have a number to call, right? To, to make sure they're getting on for the first time. Um, if they're able to use their phone and text, we can have a direct link from there to get in with direct instructions. Um, we also have, and just in case, we also have people on the ground. And, and especially for those uh, companies that are working with home care, it's very regional, right, with home care. So, because majority of stuff you do is like, you're sending people in that house, so you got to hire appropriately for the region. So um, the good thing about that is also for us, right, we can hire those individuals, tech support <laughs> and, right. and uh, exercise uh, like their kinesiologists or PTAs, uh, physical therapy assistants that can also, that they double as both and they can now go to the house, set them up for the first time and uh, get them on for the first time. Oh, um, yeah, and you can do it from any ubiquitous phone. So I think it's really important for us to not add more tools and more technology than what's really needed um, and at the lowest end we can also deploy a full uh, pad um, and with it fully loaded one button click go um, able to do that as well wow so you provide like a tablet to people for depending on the contracts that we're working sure. with right so uh, working on a provincial contract right now uh, the whole province to, to deploy this and um, but uh, yeah it's there's always a delay for those tablets. So we want it to be easy download, easy access, one blog yeah. from any browser you can access us as well, right? Um, and the the safety blanket is the, the tabs like and the in-home service just to get that to the individuals to make sure they're on for the first time. I think that's one is the technology-based. Um, the second one is just going to be, um, I think, um, like a, difficult cases where they need uh, a larger team to get them out of the woods. Like they're, they're more complicated cases where you really need a diverse team to get there. And I think that needs also some uh, modalities and, you know, that they need to go in clinic for. So those are more difficult cases, but the cookie cutter post-operative care needs, full knee replacements, the hip replacement, those are so cookie cutter we see all the time. Right. And the earlier you get to those, um, the better you are. And then, and then you'll even notice, you know, a lot of our patients um, that are, that weren't mobile and starting to, you know, start our, you know, walking programs and then working on their balance program. So be able to stand on one foot for, you know, these five seconds. Um, so that's where we really um, do a lot of good work. So COVID has, I think, opened the doors to a lot of things that prior to it may have seemed, you know, 
unreachable for I think the senior population. I even think you know, kind of off topic, but on the same path, those individuals, regardless of age, that maybe were really uh, resistant or hesitant to try online shopping during COVID, I think they discovered it. And I think a majority of them ended up enjoying it. And that fear or that unknown was then taken away from them. And they're saying a lot of them may not return to the brick and mortar stores because they found how easy it was and convenient where do you see the you know the senior care industry and even um, virtual physiotherapy over the next five years? Do you see it continuing to grow, or do you see it kind of regressing back to where it was pre-COVID? Yeah, um, I think in this for virtual physical therapy, um, I think we, from a product market fit standpoint, we're a lot better product market fit than your just basic population and and even the millennials uh, to to some degree. And I thought initially our product would serve more millennials. That's, that's my thought process around it. Like they're more tech savvy. They can get on for, for like, but you know, outside of the initial onboarding, we have the, the best utilization of our platform by the 49.6 <laughs> H, average age was 49.6, which is like, which is, you know, beyond me, we have like, right. you know, some teenagers in there as well, that skews the numbers, but on average, it's a larger, it's an older population, right? Um, and I would say that the heavier users are over 60. So there is a, a great product market fit there. And then we've seen better use as COVID undulated over time. We had everybody kind of using it, like when COVID first started, right? Because there was no other options, which is because of lockdowns and what have you. But as it normalized, We've actually seen a larger, our larger population was a senior care, hence why we spent so much time here. Um, and really dear you know, population for me, because my family, my Asian parents as well. Um, but I think the market on its own, I think it, it serves its uh, own niche and it's not for everybody. It's for a select population. But I think home care should have a combination and a hybrid model in regards to how they do this. The stuff that you're able to do um if you're able to do you know to to serve that client to do a better job and utilize the technology i think you should be able to do and i don't think technology is meant to just replace i think it's meant to augment and the, the better we do a job to create a better platform to augment that service and create better care and better outcomes that's what we want to get to um but i think for you i think services like basic home care psw nursing care um a lot of that service, I think a good percentage of your, I would say more than probably 7% of your services are for those individuals, uh, even older, probably 80 above, right? That requires a lot more attention and care where the, the families can't get to them, sure. right? So um, our, our population, I, and for you guys, I think um, that population is continuously need that support initially. And then they're, and majority of the population don't know anything about rehab or anything about, you know, preventative care and don't want to do it. Never thought about it, especially that cohort, I would say. Um, so I think it's more important that you guys introduce that at the, you know, when you guys are actually in there. So mm -hmm. it helps the population age better and age well at home. Right. And for home care companies, their job is to keep them aging well <laughs> at home sure. and not yeah. be in the long-term uh, care, care places. So I think um, it's going nowhere <laughs> when it comes down to your services. I think our services augments and supports the current infrastructure. And we don't have enough practitioners out there right now. So right. we have a limitation of practitioners, right? So healthcare practitioners, this solves for this problem. And the huge backup, especially us in provincial care, where, um, where it's um, universal health care for some of these um, services under 60, under 18 and, and um, above 65, we do have some, you know, universal um, uh, support there uh, financially. But because of that there, now they have tens of thousands of people backing up because not enough healthcare practitioners we can get to the house and get, you know, get the support done. So I think it really helps in that, those situations. And I don't think that's going anywhere. I think it's growing. Um, but you'll see, just like the stock market, it's going to hit peaks. You know, we hit really high peaks during COVID and lots of funding in this field, but it's going to hit some valleys and it's going to normalize um, over time. Sure. Has, has Medicare recognized Fixable as a preventative resource? Yeah. So uh, currently products like ours, we're able to do a couple of things. We can treat virtually. Um, we can also remotely monitor. 
So new CPTQ codes up for that. So we're working on that right now. <laughs> um, but uh, from the servicing side, I think we can service right now. Yes. Okay, great. What advice, uh, Dr. Fang, would you give seniors with maybe health or pain problems that have been affected by COVID? Hmm. That's a good one. Um, so uh, so we're, we're currently working on a project right now for uh, you know, patients who have lung scarring and same with you know COPD patients very similar and and breath work and and uh, respiratory rehab um, so there are programming coming right now for that specifically um, but I think for individuals you know suffering from COVID I think getting back to normalcy and health is really important so your basics of basics of exercise movement right um, if you meditate or do yoga which is great for the mental health you know, component of it. Um, and then before you do any resistant exercise, you're, you're doing cardiovascular exercise, making sure that your lungs are in good place and perforating. Um, and uh, I think doing the basics and eating well is kind of where you're able to control, right? And mm -hmm. uh, within our limits, or there's still a good amount of studies when it comes down to uh, the the post effects of COVID, what's what's coming, the sequelae of what what might happen later on. But from what I've seen uh, in the current field, uh, long term effects haven't been um, the major cause. And if, if you're associated with really bad respiratory issues, then yeah, absolutely, you need to get more uh, support there. But we haven't seen too many dire issues for you know mild cases. So for the majority of the population, uh, it's not a big issue. The bigger issue is, are you healthy? Right? right. And if you're not healthy, then you're more susceptible to COVID and other infections in general, diabetes, everything else right in between. And we know that, you know, the highest population that do get COVID have some kind of comorbidity, including diabetes. So what's diabetes controlling your diet? diet. Totally preventable sure. disease, right? That right. causes comorbidities everywhere else. So I'm a huge proponent of and a lot of programs we work on actually on the preventive side is about food. So we're adding all the component in. So you create a better lifestyle. The entry point might be pain, but your output is lifestyle, right? How can you do these things on your own? And the health coaching comes along the way to kind of um, push you in the right direction. Um, so yeah, but great question. I think there's a lot to uh, dive down right. deeper. <laughs> in regards. Well, and so for a senior who may be watching this or their family member and they think, oh, you know, mom or dad, they're, they'll never be able to figure this out because of the technology. Once they get past that initial hesitation of downloading it, registering it, what does the initial assessment look like for them? Yeah, it's just like this. It's literally one step. They all, so we use kind of like the technology, um, what I guess Facebook uses to kind of engage you back into the application to kind of make mm -hmm. sure you get on for the first time. And we utilize the same technology for the bad, I guess, infinity scrolling to better your health. So the first consultation is just like this. We have a conversation with them as long as your iPad or your phone, most seniors do have iPads <laughs> play the kind of candy crush on. They need the pad because it's the larger screen so they can see. Um, and so it's a conversation like that. And we start as simple as that. Right. Okay. Um, and uh, if needed, the first consultation could just be on the phone um, as well. So just get them in a more comfortable state where they're not frustrated um, and they're, they understand what's next. And if we need it be again, we can send people out to, to that region. I think I know the answer to this, but I'm going to let you answer it. What tends to surprise people the most about doing the physical physical therapy or physiotherapy virtually for the first time? Yeah. You know, you know, prior to COVID, people always ask me, it's like, how do you do physical therapy online? Don't you need to be touched? Like, don't you need to be touched? And I got that question. I, I still kind of get that question here and there, sure. right? But but if you actually looked at the research, the, the most important part is the active part, right? It's not somebody touching you and moving your tissue in the beginning, maybe, right? But you can also do that with a foam roller. You can do that with a massage ball. You can do that with bands. Like right. those are all very doable, right? And then um, I think that's a key component. Once you get up for the first time and, and jump through, understand just what you have, first of all, right? And what is a plan? <laughs> and the beautiful part is that we actually like really put the plan together and we stepwise progress with the plan. So it's a lot of data on the way that we're progressing. So components that we can't do like light touch, we're able to um, augment with better progression and feedback to the system and progress you at, a, uh, at, at the same state or better um, in many uh, cases. But remember, Bert, it's at the end of the day, it's all about movement. 
you got to do the thing to progress. And then if you're able to, like personal training online is, a, is huge right now, right? So you see all the apps and all the, um, even even um, if you look at, um, you know, the Pelotons in the world. I was just going to say, this is very similar in my mind as I'm visually thinking about it as having a Peloton, you know, exercise bike with the instructor right there on the screen. That's it, right? Yeah. That's If we're able to engage that individual to lose weight, feel amazing, and, you know, create core stabilization, why can't we do that with physical pain? Right. Why can't we do that with physical pain? And and all the research, you go back to all the modalities, even the interferentials, the electric stim, the Dr. Ho products versus the ultrasounds of the world, like it, relative to placebo, it's about the same. <laughs> Right. And the, the, the key thing that progresses you is the active component, the thing that you do, right? right. The, the exercise, the movement that you do, right? Uh, not only for the physiology of change in the muscles and, and the joints, but also more importantly for, um, for home, hormones in your body, feeling good, you know? And that comes along with, with pain specifically. You got to get those hormones right. And they're not in a good state when you're in chronic pain and, and uh, not moving at all, right? So it'll amplify how what pain feels like. Um, so yeah, it's as simple as that. If you go down, to, you know, if you look at those, it's about education. I think it's about coaching. I think it's getting people the right uh, right place, and it's all about um, also using technology tools to engage more often than a human, another human can engage you. That means push you the right buttons to 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 take the, take the action, right? I think that's the most important part. Well, I know, um, I believe you guys provided us with a video of Fixable. We're going to have that here at the conclusion of our interview, as well as all of the links, show notes, and information of how the viewers and audience can reach out to you guys to learn more. Um, I really think this is a wonderful, tremendous product to help seniors, but really like you touched on, anybody of any age to continue safely living in their own home and to be healthy. And I think it's a great product and a great service that you guys are all providing and very user friendly. Like you said, you have all the support for people that could be needed um, to start taking advantage of this product. Thank you. Thank you for your, for your time. And I think um, the, you know, the, the aging population, it, when it comes down to technology, they get the the last, the, the, the crumbs, if you will, right? Yeah. So a lot of technology is built around everybody else except for the older population, if you look at demographics. Right. But, you know, look at COVID, what they did to them. And in regards to Zoom and talking to their friends, I mean, the, the population, I would say, to be the, the last one to get back to normalcy is that because you're more susceptible to COVID. So, um, so there'd be kind of on the on, on the line for a longer period of time if you if you talk to them um so this is really important for them i think to make them feel good and then you have a massive problem coming our way in the next 20 years regards to the, the amount of people at that age one last question i want to ask you dr fang where where do you see fixable in five years from now yeah i think um i think fixable in the next five years becomes a product it, where it's the first thought on your, on your mind when something happens. I think once a physical problem or a mental illness happens, it's the first thought process you're thinking about where you're able to take action now, especially right now with the pop, uh, you know, our population of immediate gratification, the you know, same day deliveries on Amazon. I think you want that answer now. And I think you should be able to provide an answer within um, as soon as something happens, what to do next. And then that's going to, come with like a lot of artificial intelligence and and also you know uh, practitioners on the back end and then eventually you know move you through pain and prevention to better human performance so we're able to age uh, a lot better um you know at, at home and don't not so rely on external care and so i am going to ask one more even though i told you that was the last question as we were talking and you kept mentioning, you know, tablets, because seniors, you know, they like that larger screen and it's, a, I think, more comfortable for them. Um, is this something that uh, there are plans for in the future to be available on, on smart televisions? Yeah, you can do that now. You can oh, you can it do it now. The, okay. Yeah, you can totally do it now uh, with, with the setup. But um, um, yeah, so once you, again, just uh, once you get through that first onboarding process, once things are good, then you can make things that much better. Perfect. <laughs> Well, I just, I think, like I said, I think this is a great product, a great service, um, definitely much needed for, um, especially our senior population. We see it constantly where 
you know, if we're helping the family, we can get them the physical therapy. But, you know, if a senior is by themselves or they have a physical limitation, they need that help and they can't always make it to physical therapy for one reason or another. And usually it's because of transportation and this helps solve that issue for them. Yeah. I, yeah. I think, you know, there's definitely a good select population that we really serve well. And, and more importantly, the, the continual process and empowering them to, right. to know that, Hey, there is a light at the other end. You just got to do this thing and continuously do it and see positive reinforcement. Like I go, Oh, now I can, get up from my bed. Now I can move my legs. Now I can sit. I now can stand. Now I can stand and walk four steps and see that progressive iteration and highlight those. And so they get better positive feedback. I think that's really important for those individuals. And I, I think we can you know, really help in this field. So I'm excited for the next. Uh, well, we're excited to help share the word and hopefully um, our viewers and listeners will go check out Fixable and we just appreciate your time today here at All Home Care Matters, and we'll look forward to talking to you again in the future. Thanks again. This was fun. Let's do it again. All right. Thank you, Dr. Fang. We are all feeling the physical and emotional impact during this COVID-19 pandemic. You may be adjusting to working from home or staying indoors with your kids all day. There's a lot of uncertainty in the air. Going outside to a wellness appointment may be impossible. Here at Fixable, we've created a safe and virtual way to interact with world-class physiotherapists right from your home. You can book a one-on-one -on -one session from your computer or phone and even claim it through your workplace insurance. With on-demand fixable pain solutions, you can access our video programs anytime, anywhere, at home, at the gym, or even at work. Simply take out your phone, open fixable, and get prepared with the suggested equipment before you begin. Fixable challenges you at the right pace and intensity, so make sure you're moving forward with new challenging sessions that will be available as you progress. Fixable self-help solutions are enhanced with a virtual therapist. Our team of therapists are always available online within a few clicks. Oh, and did I mention? The one-on-one -on -one consults are covered by most work benefits. Fixable is a daily practice. To add it to your daily routine, we'll be sending you regular reminders to keep you going. Remember, we always have your back.
Thank you for joining us today here at All Home Care Matters. All Home Care Matters is here to help families as they face these long-term care issues. We invite you to visit us at allhomecarematters.com where there's a private, secure, fillable form where you can give us feedback, show ideas, or if you have questions, every form is read and responded to. And remember, you can listen to the show on any of your favorite podcast streaming platforms or watch the show on our official YouTube channel. Just make sure to hit that subscribe button so that you never miss an episode. We'd also like to thank Dr. Fang for taking time to visit with us today to talk about Fixable and how seniors can age in place safely. We look forward to seeing you next time here at All Home Care Matters. Thank you for joining us today. We look forward to you joining us again on another episode of All Home Care Matters. To learn more about the show and to connect with us, visit us at allhomecarematters.com.